Good morning, everyone, and thanks, Colin. Uh, let me just put a disclaimer first. I don't claim to be an expert, but I'll try my best. Uh, and I also would like to start from where the welcome speech ended. We're excited about the future. We are very, very excited about the future. And I'll talk to you a bit about that here in the next few slides. At Nokia, when we started to think about what next, we're, we're, we're deploying 5G rapidly, faster than ever. So what's next? If we just simply look at the smartphone and the traffic that it creates in the network, and let's now extrapolate that every smartphone in the world is able to render an 8K video, and everybody watches three hours of 8K video on every smartphone, what happens next? We saw that somewhere in the middle of the decade, the traffic starts to saturate. Okay, what does that mean? We can all sit tight and we're done? No, is the big answer. Absolutely not. Then we started to envision what the world in 2030 would look like, what the traffic in the networks would look like. And we saw that there were two fundamental innovations that will drive this traffic. The first one is the digital physical fusion, or essentially digital twin for everything that can exist. We already have digital twins in this world today. We have digital twins for objects, for engines, for manufacturing lines. And then the next step is to build a digital twin for a factory, for a mall. And by 2030, the expectation is that we will have a digital twin for a smart city, for a mine, and that creates immense amount of traffic. But that needs to be complemented by who? By us as humans. We will not be a remote entity observing that digital twin. We will be immersed in the digital twin. And how will that happen? There will be human augmentation. And what does that mean specifically? There are several devices that are available today which let you immerse, and whether that be a virtual reality, an augmented reality, or some kind of extended reality. Our firm belief is that to get full cyber physical confluence, there will be a huge proliferation of such devices, whether they be exoskeletons that humans can wear in production environments, or gaming people can wear glasses, but the combination of having digital twins and human augmentation devices will allow a never before seen combination of cyber and physical worlds. And that will, my friends, drive traffic in 2030. Everybody here, I'm sure, has heard the word metaverse, but it's important to qualify that. The metaverse can be simply a consumer metaverse used for social interactions gaming. It can be in our workplaces. It can be used for collaborations. Over the last two years, all of us had, you know, good or bad reasons, opportunity to sit in front of our computer to have a Teams call, a Zoom call, and so on. But that wasn't immersive. Our expectation is that enterprises will have metaverses which are far more immersive and collaborative than we have today. And then let's move to the world of operations, the world of OT. Then you have the industrial metaverse. And that is for three big reasons, safety, efficiency, and productivity. And if we're able to achieve better, safer, and more productive work environments through metaverses, that will drive the traffic. So two enabling innovations and the world of metaverse in every facet of our lives. This will drive the traffic. So I, while I agree with Colin that we've coined the term 6G and now we're defining what it is, we've also started in parallel at Nokia, started defining what it would be used for, because that's paramount. Then if we build from there, some of it exists already today. I talked a bit about those. Let's start from the bottom, enablers. Several of those exist, but they haven't scaled yet. That's the simple way to look at it. We've all heard the term edge computing. There is some edge computing already being deployed in different parts of the world, whether it be edge or far edge or on-prem. 
We've all heard about NFTs with good and bad connotations, but that will be an integral part of how Web3 will be enabled, and so on. Then we look at essentials. We do have a fantastic wide area network. That's what we deploy today. But that is already being complemented by highly performance specific private networks. We're deploying at Nokia one private wireless network a day. And it's just the beginning. Then you look at cloud hosting and streaming. This is an integral part of content absorption of each of us, whether it be enterprise or consumer. Finally, if you look at experiences, we're all beginning to experience the metaverse just a little bit. Now scale this to 2030, and that's what 6G is needed for. And then if you do this in three other dimensions, and I added an extra column here called 5G advanced, because let's make sure that we don't forget that very critical step in getting to 6G. Let's start with video. We have 4K, 8K video. We believe 8K will be more pervasive in a few years. Then from there, we will move to extended reality in the time frame of 5G advanced, release 18, 19, 20 of 3GPP. Going to 6G, it will be holographic transmissions, immersive metaverse. We look at another dimension, and that is digital twinning, objects moving to farms, mines, manufacturing facilities, malls, offices, and finally leading to metaverse of everything for real-time traffic management, a smart city metaverse remotely managed. And finally, if you look at probably the most intriguing part, because so far I've talked about traffic, there is a third dimension to it. Networks, whether it be terrestrial, non-terrestrial, fixed or wireless, have been almost always used for communications. Audio, video, text, metaverses, still a form of communication. There is another dimension that begins to evolve, and that is from communications, the service that you offer through the network is localization, is timing and sync. That's in 5G advanced time frame. That is absolutely necessary if you want to put a 5G advanced network in a production control environment. Then you move to 6G. We're talking here about network with a sense, not just to communicate, not just to collaborate, not just to talk or look at videos or be immersed in a metaverse, but also to sense the environment. Because the frequencies that we are all envisioning for 6G time frame, they have the char characteristics and attributes that would allow us to not just talk to each other, but sense the environment. And that is a fundamental change of why we build networks. Not just to communicate, but put a network in a mine that actually can sense if there is toxicity. And then we're talking about putting sensors at sub terahertz for health surveillance. They're not communicating, they're sensing the health of an individual on sub terahertz frequencies. It's a network with a sense. It's a huge change. The magnitude of this change, if you can think about how many devices exist in the FIRA today, call it 50,000 devices, 100,000 devices, the expectation is when the network moves as a, to a sensing network, there will be 10 million devices per square kilometer. That's the magnitude of change we're talking about. And that's what 6G is going to be needed for. Already at 5G, advanced, we're introducing some of these features. I will not go through the details of each of them, but it's a build up to 6G. We're getting all of these steps to get to 6G. But when we get to 6G, I already talked about network as a sensor. 
extreme connectivity. What does that mean? 10 million devices per square kilometer, sub millisecond latency. Because in a production control environment, you can't have 10 milliseconds. We're talking about 10 to 100 microseconds. That's a thousand times lower latency than we have. We're talking about nanosecond synchronization for 6G. That's the intent with extreme connectivity. And just two more examples, security and trust. This is paramount. Nobody would say that we don't need security, but security as it exists today will not be sufficient when you have 10 million devices per square kilometer, when you have production control factory automation connected to 6G. Our belief is by 2030, we will need quantum methods for security. Otherwise, we will not be able to suffice the need of the environment at that time. And finally, it is important to note that artificial intelligence will be a critical building block of 6G. With 5G, there is already artificial intelligence in several parts of the network. In 5G advance, it will be almost a critical boosting element. We will not have closed loop systems. We will have open loop systems with, with, with basically the device talking to the network, but the network making real time AI or CNN based decisions boosted by the closed loop. But in 6G time frame, it's artificial intelligence driven, driven transceive. You will need that because you can't have 10 million devices talking to the network and telling the network what to do. The network needs to decide using machine learning and convolutional neural networks. That's our vision. We believe we will get there and the future is very, very exciting, sir. Bell Labs was at the core of innovation for 5G. Now once more at 6G, that's our plan. Thank you.